Hi again. Today I want to talk to you about something that I am by no means an expert on. Women. I wanted to, well, first let me explain why I'm doing this video. Uh, last night I happened to be watching Hardball with Chris Matthews because I was up late and now that Glenn Beck is no longer on the air I don't have anything to watch at 1 a.m. in the morning. I tried just reading but I it's difficult to read at that hour. It's hard for me to concentrate. Um, anyway, he was doing this segment uh, about uh, there being fewer women in public office than there were just a few years ago. In fact, for the first time in a generation, the number of women serving in Congress declined from one year to the next. There are fewer women serving in Congress this year than there were last year. That's the first such decline in something like 30 years, I think he said. And uh, there were a few things that stood out to me about this segment. It was only like seven minutes long, but it was interesting that he had on two female members of Congress, but they were both Democrats. Not only were they both Democrats, they were both from the same state. It was Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York and Congresswoman Kathy Hochul, who recently won that special election in uh, the western part of the state. Now... Uh, Another thing that was unusual to me about him doing this segment uh, was uh, Chris Matthews, as you know, is a bit of a misogynist. Well, he is a misogynist. I mean, I've heard him say very uh, unkind things about a lot of uh, women, and uh, he has his favorite targets, of course, but uh, I don't think anyone who watches him regularly could uh, seriously argue otherwise uh, that he's... He, he's he doesn't have an, a, an intense uh, contempt for some women. And another thing that was odd was he uh, seemed to lament the fact uh, that there was only one woman in the White House debt talks that were going on this week. And that, of course, is House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi. Now... This raises uh, a few interesting uh, points about uh, people like Chris Matthews and, and what they think about hey, women. Sorry I had to do that. He tends to ramble on and uh, not get to the point quick enough for most people's satisfaction. Let's take a look at something Kristen Gillibrand said on Hardball last night. Well, you know, our president is very committed to women. I can tell you, one of the, the first bill he signed was the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act to give women more resources and information to be able to get equal pay. Uh, and he's been a champion on issues nominating two women to the Supreme Court as his two nominees is unbelievably important. Stop it right there. Uh, unbelievably important. It's unbelievably important uh, that Obama appointed two women to the Supreme Court. That's, I mean, it's important whoever a president appoints to the Supreme Court, but just the fact that they're women, I don't think makes it a, you know, a, a big deal. It, 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 I Call me old-fashioned, but I like to know a little bit uh, more about uh, who the president appoints to the Supreme Court than just their gender. Um, that was just one example. Let, let, let's get into uh, some more specific things she said. Uh, take this for example. Interested in being part of the governing body. We still only have a handful of women governors. We still have a handful of women on corporate boards as CEOs. All right. Now, okay, there aren't uh, very many women uh, in governorships and, and and there aren't that many women senators, although I think there are far more women senators than there are female governors. But interestingly enough, uh, let's take what she said one at a time. You know, last year, several states did elect their first female governor. Uh, New Mexico elected Susana Martinez. Oklahoma elected Mary Fallon. South Carolina elected Nikki Haley. There may be one more I'm forgetting, but uh, all of those women, of course, were Republicans. And consider also the case of uh, when she mentioned uh, Fortune 500 company CEOs. Carla Fiorina, excuse me, Carly Fiorina 
was the first woman to chair a Fortune 20 company, probably. And she ran for Senate. She ran a good campaign. She presented uh, an excellent contrast to Barbara Boxer. But uh, the state of California, the people who voted in California, overwhelmingly reelected Barbara Boxer. And so in some of these cases, it's like the voters don't want, I don't want to say they don't want women to succeed. I mean, one woman beats another woman. That doesn't say, that doesn't tell you a whole lot. But do you get the feeling that uh, Hochul and Gillibrand and even Matthews are saying, you know, we don't want more women in politics, we want more democratic women. I mean, look at all the rising stars in the Republican Party who were women. Michelle Bachman, Christy Nome, uh, newly elected Senator Kelly Ayotte. These, not to mention the three women I just named uh, who were uh, elected governor last year. It's interesting to me that uh, one of the contrasts between the two parties in terms of how they run their operation is, how can I put this, it has to do with discipline. And basically, one of the things I will say about the Democrats is they are a much more disciplined party than the Republican Party. Uh, you really have to toe the line if you're a Democrat, whereas if you're a Republican, no matter what your stature, no matter whether you're a freshman or a seasoned veteran of Capitol Hill, the party will pretty much let you go out and say whatever bat crap insane thing you want. It doesn't have to be bat crap insane, but you can challenge the conventional wisdom. You can say controversial things and still get ahead in the Republican Party. In the Democratic Party, not so much. If you're a woman and you want to move into the upper echelon of leadership in the Democratic Party, then you pretty much have to keep your mouth shut unless the party bosses let you know it's okay to speak. Uh, look at the women who are uh, in the leadership right now in the Democratic Party. You've got Nancy Pelosi in the House. You've got Patty Murray in the Senate. You've got uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz running the DNC. None of these are particularly intelligent women. In fact, they're, dare I say, uh, ditzy for lack of a better word. Uh, the Democrats don't value intelligence very much. They like having someone they can control who says the right things, who, uh, well, I think control is a pretty good word. They like having a mouthpiece. And these are very disciplined mouthpieces. You, know, you ever see Debbie Wasserman Schultz on TV? She stays on her talking points, doesn't want to get in to a frank exchange of ideas or an intellectual argument. Uh, contrast that with the women who are uh, garnering a lot of attention and publicity and quickly uh, making a name for themselves in the Republican Party. You have Nikki Haley, the governor of South Carolina. You have Michelle Bachman. You have, I mentioned uh, Christy Nome. I mentioned uh, Kelly Ayotte, newly elected senator from New Hampshire. There's probably a few others I'm forgetting to mention, but uh, you see my point. These are all very smart articulate women who are not being uh, relegated to uh, the backbench. I should probably not go any further for fear that I might say something way too controversial to put on the internet. So I'll wrap this up by saying I still think Chris Matthews is a misogynist. Even if, you know, he has some uh, women on uh, on his show from time to time treats them respectfully and pretends to care about the fact that uh, there seems to be a decreasing number of women in high-level public offices. Well, that's my two cents. Be sure to check out my website, 
comment below, let me know what you think, subscribe, uh, until next time, don't mess with the right-wing genius.